What's up everybody, it's Snack Pack. I got a lot of folks who are asking me about the equipment that I use in my home flight sim setup. So today I'm gonna to take you into my man cave, to my special location where I installed everything. We'll go through it piece by piece. If this is your first Snack Pack video, I am a helicopter flight instructor and also have a fixed wing rating uh, for civilian aircraft. And I use Microsoft Flight Simulator and DCS to do real world instruction. So if this is something that you like and enjoy, make sure you like and subscribe to this video. Starting with the brains of the operation, here's my PC. I've got the Aorus Z690 Pro chipset. This has a ton of USB 3.0 and uh, 3.2 ports that's really great for uh, plugging in on my joysticks and whatnot. And I've got the Intel 12900K, got a 3090Ti, uh, one terabyte SSD, 32 gigs of RAM, and a thousand watt power supply. Opted to go for fan cooling on the CPU as I didn't really need anything liquid cool or anything crazy like that. Now for airplane stuff, I had to spend a little bit of money and get uh, a good yoke, so I went with the Honeycomb. Uh, so far, absolutely no complaints. This thing works awesome, uh, feels great, and it's got all the switches and buttons that I wanted. And I also still have my Logitech Flight Control Quadrant set up here, um, and I've got this screwed into my desk here. I do have the Thrustmaster Warthog throttle, which is much better. However, I still find this one really useful uh, for flying fixed wings, especially a little Cessna. I got my uh, throttle control and my mixture control, and also the little rocker switches are great for trim and flaps and whatnot. So I still use this quite often, and it was pretty cheap. And here's the first piece of gear Thrustmaster sent me. This thing is pretty awesome. It is very solid. I use this for flying fighter jets, which is super fun. And I also reverse the axis and use it as a collective when I fly helicopters. And here's the other half of the Thrustmaster Hotas Warthog. Um, this is the flight stick with the base. And this is actually the F-18 stick that they also sent me, which is pretty awesome. This thing feels fantastic. Both of these flight controls are mounted to my desk using the High Kick brand desk mounts. They're both solid and well worth the money in my opinion. To switch it out with the original A10 base, very easy, very quick, just a quick little spin of a knob and stick it right on. Now the folks at Thrustmaster were super generous with sending me the Warthog and the uh, Cougar MFDs. Uh, they were out of the Thrustmaster pedals, so I'm still currently using the Satec, uh, Logitech Satec pedals, and they're doing great so far. Uh, I really like them. They feel, they feel just fine. I'm sure there's much more fancy stuff out there, but these work great for rudder control and I have brake control, which is awesome. So as far as screens go, um, I just have a 1080p uh, main screen here. It's a 32 inch screen and this is a Samsung. It's actually a Samsung uh, monitor slash smart TV. So I can, uh, it's got a little remote. I can watch TV on it too. Um, but this thing is awesome considering that I got it for 75 bucks brand new. Um, it was actually a floor model at Walmart um, that was already reduced down to about 150 and uh, since it was the floor model, I talked him down uh, to a 50% off, and it's actually the second time I've done that, so if you ever see floor models on clearance at Walmart, usually you can talk them down to about 50% off. Pretty awesome. There's a link to this in the description, but this is probably my favorite part of the whole sim setup. So Thrustmaster sent me their Cougar MFDs, uh, but they don't have screens, they just have buttons, and I wasn't quite sure what to do with it. However, there's a really cool video where it uh, shows you how to buy some LCD screens. And you have to 3D print a housing for it. So I 3D printed the housing and bought the screens and put it all together. And now I have functional MFDs, which are really cool for DCS, but also really cool for playing uh, MSFS um, in a G1000 cockpit. So you see I've got the buttons set up to where I can change calm frequencies change nav frequencies on the first MFD. I have it set up for my autopilot functions and really whatever you want to bind. So you can make some really cool binding profiles and it's very handy to have these right in front of you. Here's a side view where you can see the MFD 3D printed housing and uh, the little circuit board kind of sticking out there off the side where everything plugs into. Now probably my favorite piece of gear besides my iPad that I fly with in real life is my Bose A20 headset. 
Uh, this headset is worth every penny. It's not cheap, but it's definitely worth every penny. And uh, I had to find a way to incorporate it into the sim. So you can see on the left there, there's a little spot for it to plug into. It's a GA plug-in headset that's actually a USB uh, plug-in for your general aviation headset. And that is from a company called FSX. So here you can see the FSX Solo. I think they're based out of New Zealand, so it takes a little while to ship, but uh, it's definitely worth it. In the center, I have a 3D printed bracket that I designed in Blender and printed out to mount it onto the bottom of my desk. And on the right, there is a headset mount uh, that I got off Thingiverse that I printed out. It's even got a 3D printed screw that works really well. And then here I've got my VR controllers hanging on by some little hooks. And here's a little lamp I got from a store called Dirt Cheap for 10 bucks, And we've got room for some charging cables and, of course, room for the Dark Lord straight from Galaxy's Edge. And I've got my Xbox 360 controller here, which I use for uh, drone camera control and Microsoft Flight Simulator and for getting absolutely wrecked in Call of Duty. Um, I've also printed out a nice little uh, Xbox 360 controller stand. I also got a Thingiverse and uh, just have that attached to the table with some double-sided tape. Makes a nice little mount for it. This is the webcam I use. This is the Elgato Facecam. It's a 1080p camera that's capable of 60 FPS. Uh, there is a 4K version available for three times the cost. It's really hard to find. I use this to record myself on a regular basis and also for face tracking. And what I really like is it's got a little lens cap so that the CIA can't spy on me. Now on the top shelf here, I've got my HP Reverb G2 VR headset. And I've got that extra flight stick. There's the F-18 flight stick for the Thrustmaster Hotas Warthog. Here's a cool little uh, impossible table design I found on Thingiverse that I printed out. A basket with accessories, and there's that case for my Bose A-12. Now, here I've got some interesting things for cable management. This uh, is just a little, I can't remember what it's called, but basically you just use a hole saw, drill a hole in your desk, and then you can feed cables through this. Uh, cable management is extremely important when you have this many things to plug in. And we'll take a look at the bottom here. You can see more beautiful cable management, mostly made up of zip ties. And also these little cable management clips that I found you can get like 10 of these for about a dollar. They're extremely, extremely useful. And here's where I have my Cat6 cable plugged in. You can also see to the right where I shamefully drilled a hole in my wall at the wrong spot and in between where I screwed up the wall even more but I do have Ethernet and my internet is over 300 megabits per second which is fantastic as far as keyboard and mouse go I just went cheap with this as like a $20 little wireless Logitech setup and I uh, didn't need anything too fancy but what's interesting is how I incorporated this so you can see I've got a little modular setup that I built just out of wood and these little cabinet catches so the stand comes right off, the MFD assembly pops right off. And you'll see I actually use the uh, native screws for the honeycomb yoke. These are installed on the top and I assume they're meant for mounting things. So there's a better look at those screws. And then these things just kind of clip right on in a modular fashion. Now it's really important for me to have my iPad at the ready. So this is the iPad Mini 6 that I use to fly in real life. And I got a little stand for this, this is a gooseneck stand. I believe it's the Magipi uh, iPad clip. So it's really great. I have a program called Flight Events. It's a free desktop program you can get. And it tricks your foreflight into thinking that you're actually flying when you're just in the sim. And here's a nice panoramic view of the whole setup. And when you're done, we can just close the doors and nobody even knows it's there.